Hi, I'm Laura McGath from the Apphold Planetarium at Lourdes University. It's spring here on campus, and that means that our weather forecast is for longer, warmer, sunnier days. That makes this a good opportunity for us to think about our seasons, our weather, and how weather here on Earth compares to the weather in other parts of our solar system. Let's watch the Earth travel around the sun, a trip that takes one year. The path the Earth follows is called its orbit. Now, do you notice anything when you look at the poles of the Earth? Notice that the Earth is tipped over a bit as it travels. Let's look at this up close. The Earth's equator does not line up exactly with its orbit. The Earth is actually tilted 23 degrees, and that tilt affects which part of our world gets more sunshine. So Earth's tilt is the whole reason that we have seasons. When the North Pole is closer to the sun, then we get more sunshine and it's summertime. When the tilt causes the North Pole to be further from the sun, like there, it's winter. Now the Earth's orbit isn't a perfect circle around the sun. In fact, the Earth is about 3 million miles farther from the sun in July compared to January. Seasons depend on tilt, not total distance. Now let's visit some of the other planets in our solar system. Our first stop will be Mercury. Mercury's equator lines up with its orbit so there's no seasons on Mercury. Temperatures here don't change over the course of a year, but they certainly change over a day. Being so close to the sun, it's over 800 degrees in the daytime, but without an atmosphere to keep that heat, temperatures drop to minus 275 at night. So on Mercury, you only get a choice between super hot and bitter cold. The next planet is Venus. The skies of Venus are completely filled with clouds, and those clouds trap the sun's heat. It's called the greenhouse effect, and we're seeing a similar thing happening here on Earth with global warming. The weather forecast here is hot, any time of day or night. If we could look at Venus without clouds, we'd see a world stained yellow with sulfur. So if you could stand the heat and the clouds, you'd still have the stink of rotten eggs. Mars is tilted like Earth is, so there are seasons on Mars. Imagine living here. The biggest differences you'd see over the course of a year would be at the poles, where ice caps grow during the winter and shrink during the summer. During the day, Mars can be a pleasant 70 degrees, but temperatures drop at night, even at the equator. Keeping warm at night would be important. It would also be essential to find enough water if you were going to live on Mars. But it could be so much fun to live here. Imagine a whole planet to explore, but with less than half the gravity. No one could live on Jupiter because there's nowhere to land. The entire planet is made of gas. Those light bands are zones where gas is rising. The darker red bands are belts where the gas is sinking. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to actually go into Jupiter? We can do that virtually. That bar on the left shows our altitude. This new bar shows the temperature and it shows that it quickly gets to hundreds of degrees. Humans would never stand the incredible temperatures and pressures inside Jupiter. We've come out through the great red spot the biggest storm on Jupiter. Now, even though humans couldn't survive there, it's fun to imagine. If you could actually get to the center of Jupiter, you would see something that you never see here on Earth. Hydrogen, what we experience here as a gas, crushed into a metal. Can you even picture metallic hydrogen? Saturn is tipped on its side, so technically there are seasons here, but it's still cold all year long. Once again, 
cold at the surface, hot inside. Conditions are similar at Uranus and Neptune, with one surprising difference. About 5,000 miles down, it's raining diamonds. The pressure is so great that carbon is squeezed into diamonds, and the diamonds would fall like raindrops within these gas giants. Yep, two planets with diamonds, but they're far out of reach. So what's it like on Pluto? Standing here, the sun would appear as a small, dim star. The warmest it gets here is about minus 400 degrees, and that's during the day. And a day on Pluto lasts 153 hours. Pluto's orbit around the Sun is more of an oval, so the distance between Pluto and the Sun changes a lot. When Pluto is close to the Sun, ice on the surface turns into a gas and temporarily forms a thin atmosphere. Pluto becomes much colder when it's traveling far away from the Sun, so then most of the atmosphere freezes and falls to the surface as snow. So Pluto and those other planets are just not places that people can live. We might visit some of the others, but they're not really places that we can stay for long. As Earth Day approaches, remember that Earth is our home, and it's home for every person and all of the living things that we share our planet with. Beautiful and fragile, Earth is home, and it's the only one we've ever known. And there are no others on the horizon. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you under the stars with the Apold Planetarium again.